This week on Bike People, we meet the new team. Now this is Duke, he's one of our Budweiser Clydesdales. Forrest turns up the heat, and we all get a little tunnel vision. All that and more, straight ahead on Bike People. Bike People, brought to you in part by Cat Trike, focusing on the design, engineering, and manufacturing of innovative recumbent trikes that are made in the USA. The Hotel Pati, a cycling hub for the High Trestle and Raccoon River Valley Trail, a destination unto itself for Iowa adventures. The Hotel Pati. Bike World, the store that supports the sport, serving cyclists since 1979. Additional consideration provided by Shimano. Winnebago. Bike Iowa. My name is Forrest. I got my first bike at age three. My next bike at age seven. I've ridden in Europe, Australia, and all across our great nation. My name is Suzette. I'm a mom, TV personality, I have no and bike lover. I've known Forrest for years from interviews, rides, and bike events. I'm in the bicycle business and a cycling enthusiast. I've been collecting, fixing, and selling bikes my whole life. We love bikes and all the people, stories, and adventures around them. But it's all downhill, right? We're on a journey to show you the world through two wheels. Yeah! To help you become Bike, bike People. people. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Bike People. Viewers tell us all the time, you two lead such interesting lives. And you know what, we do, because we get out and take adventures, and so can you. Where are we today? Today we're in Rushport, Missouri on the Katy Trail. We'll be following along the Missouri River. Views along the bluffs are absolutely spectacular. It will be a great day on the bicycle. So let's ride. Stretching 237 miles across the state of Missouri, the Katy Trail is America's longest rails to trails project. The eastern half follows Lewis and Clark's path along the Missouri River and then meanders through peaceful farmland in small town Americana. equals bats. You're a rock climber, you can have some fun here, I'll bet you. Oh, this must be the bistro. Yeah, let's pull in here. Bike racks and everything. <laughs> Well, Forrest, you can go get a snack. I will get some wine. How about that? <laughs> I'm ready for a snack. All right. Looks like a great place. Yeah. We're overlooking the Katy Trail right now and, of course, the Missouri River. We decided to come up to the A-frame for a little break. It was a nice little hike up here. Sure was. Let's check this out right here. Information, oh, Lewis and Clark oh, Expedition crossed here. Oh, of course. Looks like they actually camped just right down here. Yeah. Pretty amazing. I want to know where all the rest of the hieroglyphics are. I want to, I want to see all of them. I want to get up close. 
the guy with the reindeer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they had a cow or something. That looks like something the kids drew. <laughs> well, maybe a kid drew those too. You don't know. <laughs> Unbelievable. Can't even believe it. Yeah, to see. And the little one to the right looks like the Fisher guy. appreciate the trail signs, how much further I have to go, where I am, they just don't leave you guessing here. The trailheads are really nice too because they give you a lot of historical information plus pertinent information for the communities and the services that you can expect there. Makes me want to be Lewis and Clark again. Every time I come to Missouri, that's all I think about. Oh yeah? I, I'm just so enamored by that story. I just think that's the neatest historical thing. Rich in history, Rocheport appears much as it did 140 years ago and is a prime example of how towns grew with steamboat transportation along the river. With the blossoming of interest in Rocheport, many artisans have adopted this sleepy little town as an ideal spot for their homes and studios. Antique stores, cafes, restaurants, everything you can need. Lots of bicycles over here. Must be a good restaurant. Mm. Something to check out, perhaps. With time on their hands, Forrest and Suzette decide to check out some of the shops downtown. Oh, this is appropriate from the last weekend right here. Ah. Oh. deserve the last piece of pie. There we go. Unless it's uh, rhubarb. That's a huge door. Holy moly. Mm. Homemade ice cream? Yes, it is. This is what we've been riding our bikes in preparation for right, right here. Exactly. Well, I think chocolate almond sounds amazing. For me, black cherry. Bon appetit. Mmm, chocolatey. Two thumbs up. Very good. Just off the trail, the schoolhouse bed and breakfast offers adventurers a refreshing home base to explore the surrounding area. Here we are at the end of day one in the Katy Trail bike ride. We are at the schoolhouse bed and breakfast with Mike and Lisa, the owners, and you should feel quite comfortable being a school teacher. Of course I am. Now I understand that you have some really amazing rooms to show us. We have 11 guest rooms that uh, were created from the original four classrooms in the building when the building served as Rocheport's public school starting in 1914 when this was built. So this is our centennial year. Nice. And today we have um, the 11 guest rooms. We serve a full breakfast each morning to our guests as well as lots of goodies at check-in and, and things to uh, accommodate cyclists as well. This is quite the end for such a small town. Why Rocheport? Well, we were actually living in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2002 and decided that we needed a, a career change and had always kind of been a dream to open a bed and breakfast someday. So we did a nationwide search of B&Bs that were on the market and discovered that the schoolhouse was available for sale. 
and we did a trip to Rocheport and stayed at the bed and breakfast, scoped out the town and just fell in love with what it had to offer tourists coming into this area. So Mike, what kind of cyclists do you see coming through here? Well, there's basically three kinds of cyclists that we have that we've identified that come through on the trail, and that is the overnight cyclist who is passing through, taking the trail from end to end. Our schoolhouse dormitory accommodates them in a very nice way because it is more of a minimalist property, but still has private baths, uh, rooms that are air conditioned, that type of thing, and the cyclist has the opportunity to up, come in at his own leisure and leave at his own leisure uh, with a breakfast that's on site. Nice. We also have the cyclist who uses Rocheport as a home base and they're doing day trips, uh, say to Columbia or to Boonville or places like that and then coming back. And then the third type is the, the group activity, tour groups that are coming through and they, they will basically uh, be 10, 15 people who are coming through at a time. For the groups, we have the Clark Street Lodge, which is uh, a much larger property which can accommodate 10 to 15 people very easily. So do you do anything else that's special for the cyclists that stay with you? We have ancillary properties like bike storage sheds with air compressors, workbenches, tools, things like that to try to help meet their needs. And don't forget the locker room. We have a hall bathroom in the dormitory that the schoolhouse guests as well as the dormitory guests can use if they want to go out and enjoy the trail after checkout and have a nice place to clean up before they jump back in their car and head home. So you're busy running this business. Do you get a chance to ever get out and enjoy the trail yourself? Once in a while. Days like this, when you have a lot of daylight left, we can sneak out after checkout and go out for a, just a quick leisurely ride along the river or through the tunnel. Well, I may have been a teacher for many, many years, but I've never actually slept at school, so this should be fun. Your students may not be able to say that, though. <laughs> anyway, thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. It's going to be awesome. When we moved in, there was a chest-type freezer and a microwave yep. down here. The one that went through my brother's farm this year. The neighbor's eye. Yeah. Here we are at the end of day one on the Katy Trail. That's right. We saw bluffs from below and from above and then met a great couple at the schoolhouse bed and breakfast. And of course, I had the better room once again. Well, my bowl of ice cream was bigger. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. This was a meal. It didn't have as many spots. It was more monochromatic. What about then the mountain lion? How big is that? Oh, what do we got here? Oh, oh beautiful man. view. Look at those bluffs, oh. the water. Getting ready to start day two. We're heading west today out of Rocheport, Missouri on the Katy Trail. Today we'll cross through the most beautiful tunnel on the entire trail. That's because it's the only tunnel on the entire trail and that's what makes Rocheport so awesome. Then we're gonna head over to Warm Springs Ranch to see some pretty neat creatures. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Ah, smells like an old cellar. If you had a train, I bet you could blow the horn. It'd sound really nice in here. Oh, that is cool. Woo. Oh, what a beauty. <laughs> that is neat. Beautiful. Wow, this is incredible. It was a fun tunnel. I've been through longer tunnels where you couldn't ride all the way through. It's nice to be able to stay on the bike the entire tunnel. Oh, it certainly was comforting to be able to see from one end to the other. Now, I know we gained a tunnel, but I think we're also losing some of these bluffs. It's still a beautiful, shady trail, nice and flat, just like I like it. This trail for a Crush Rock Trail is great shape. In fact, they have some long rides on it. They have week-long rides, just like our Ragbri in Iowa, and they've got a Peddler's Jamboree that's actually coming to Iowa, too, in our trail system. I was not born yet. No. Close. Located just outside of Boonville and home to the Budweiser Clydesdales is Warm Springs Ranch, a state-of-the-art breeding operation. Well, 
the great thing about a bike ride in a bike trail is you never know what you're going to come up against. That's right. We are at the Warm Springs Ranch, home of the Budweiser Clydesdale. And this is one of the most exciting things we've ever done on Bike People. And who do we have here? And this is Duke. He's one of our Budweiser Clydesdales. He's a mature 12 year old. Um, he traveled with the uh, St. Louis Hitch for a number of years because we have three, three traveling teams, an East Coast, Midwest, and West Coast Hitch. And so he comes out and meets the people. He meets them uh, at the end of each tour. He's so gentle, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's a real good guy. So John, tell us your story and tell us about Warm Spring Ranch. Well, Warm Springs Ranch is the breeding farm of the Budweiser Clydesdales. This is where the Budweiser Clydesdales start. Um, we have our babies. Uh, we have a baby that was just born yesterday. We usually have about 30 babies a year um, and keep around, around 40 mares. So uh, our whole purpose of being here, there again, is for replacement Budweiser Clydesdale horses. It looks like quite the facility here. How big is it and how many people do you have working for you? Uh, well, our farm is 340 acres, um, which is uh, comprised of 14 miles of fence that wow. we have. Wow. Yeah, a lot of fence to keep the horses in. Um, we have a staff of four full-time guys. And so, uh, and then during this season, during the tour season, which we have tours from April 1st to October 31st, uh, we have four uh, tour guides as well. Now, John, we love riding bikes. Is there a saddle we could put on Duke here and I could take him for a spin? <laughs> Duke is broke to ride. Oh, wow. um, and there are a number of people that actually, the Clydesdale enthusiasts that, that don't just hitch him up to a wagon. A lot of them just want something a little different to ride, so they do buy him to, to, as their oh, riding really? horse, yeah. Kind of like the Cadillac of horses. I wonder if we could take him down to the trail. He Did might he? leave, I don't know, All maybe right, not. and you follow with a scoop. How about that? John, I've always loved your commercials now. Are they filmed here or somewhere else? Uh, most of our commercials would be filmed elsewhere, depending on what location they need. Um, but the, uh, in 2013, we did the Super Bowl commercial that started with that little baby, the nice, first thing you right, see. Right. Yeah, it shows the barn and then the baby. Um, and she was three days old at the time. So when they, it was time to shoot and they wanted to get the baby and they had to come to us. We weren't taking her anywhere. Nice. So speaking of babies, John, you said you had a new baby born last night. Can we take a look at her? Sure, we'll go look at her. Nice. Well, it's amazing, right over here, she's a little over two months old is all, and she's huge yeah. by comparison. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they, they really do grow quickly. Yeah. Look at that curly mane, that just kills me, that's so funny. I would love to see all the rest of the horses. Should we go out to the pasture? Sure, let's go see some other babies. Yeah. Great. This little guy with a dot in a few minutes, he'll be the first one to come visit us. Yeah, he's, that's, that's the friendliest one of the bunch. Yeah. She's just got to be in the middle of everything. Yeah, they're good to pet on the babies, but just if they start nibbling on you, push them away because they will, you know, they're like little kids. They nibble and then they end up biting you. Not intentionally. So a quote, normal horse is going to weigh what? About 1,000 pounds. 1,000 to 1,200. Yeah, the Clydesdales are about, about, about twice the size of a of the. I want to get horse. over, over yeah. here a little bit, I think. When you look at each of these, you know who they are, so to speak. Oh, I yeah. mean, just like a person. You yeah. know, that's Susie and that's Mary and that's... Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, all, this is all we do. It's just like knowing 100 people. Sometimes you'll go, what, 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 what did we name? I know who they are. You know, you'll know who they are, who their mom and dad is, but like, okay, what do we name it? Well, John, it's amazing all the great things we find during a bicycle ride, so thank you so much for this great tour. Yeah, well, this has been a fantastic experience. I'll come back, for sure. Perfect. Thanks for coming out. Of course, that was amazing. Thank you for setting that up. John does a great job with that tour, but now I think it's time to hit the trail and head back to Rocheport. I just love riding by these bluffs. I seriously could do this all day. Well, if you go slow enough, you could do it all day long, I suppose. You know, we're having a great time on the trail, enjoying the scenery. Can you imagine the locomotive engineers got to enjoy this every single day, and it was called work for them. For us, it's fun.
what's happening here? How are you? Hi, George Rob. Hi. This is my blacksmith shop, my educational blacksmith shop, and this is my wife's antique shop. It's beautiful. And uh, her name is Christina. Great. Well, it's really nice to have you guys in town. We were riding our bikes by, and we just heard the clanging of the hammer. We wanted to see what was happening. Well, wonderful. We'll do a demonstration for you. Oh, thanks. This shop is set up as a blacksmith shop would have been set up in the period of time from about 1821, 22 to about 1855. Okay, what we're gonna do here today is I'm gonna show you how to make a leaf. Now, the first thing you do is draw it to a point. In the blacksmith association that I belong to, uh, we probably have 450 to 550 blacksmiths. Oh, look at the color on this now. I'm going to use one of the tools, the hold down tool. So you can see, when you build, if you build a rose, and you build the leaves, and you build the stems, you can see how much time I got into one of them. So George, what got you involved in uh, blacksmithing? Well, in the early days, about 28 years ago, I raised cattle, and due to malfunctions of equipment, I became a metal worker quickly. Yeah, out of necessity. Out of necessity. But that was 28 years ago. 28 years. You obviously are hooked on it. I love it. I couldn't, I couldn't find a better thing to do. Uh, time melts away. I can take concepts from my mind and put in the metal, or I can take concepts out of your head, make a drawing, and give you a finished product. That's nice. amazing. Where do you get your tools? Uh, I make almost all of them. Uh, from scratch, uh, and what I don't make, I'll uh, buy at a farm auction, stick in the fire and modify to what I want. Oh, wow, nice, nice. <laughs> I need a fire like that. <laughs> I like that. George, of all the things that you do, what's your favorite? My favorite thing is meeting people and understanding their concept, and if they have a love of blacksmithing, I become excited immediately. Have you taught other people to be blacksmiths? Uh, yes, uh, the first uh, apprentice I had was my son George, and uh, he is still a blacksmith, comes in blacksmith me every day, even though he's delved into the world of IT, I and that's what he makes his living with. Uh, my daughter um, is also, uh, picks up a pretty mean hammer, and we've had various and sundry people come by and beat, beat for a day and leave. Uh, a young lady from Oklahoma University did, um, and we've got uh, people in and out. Well, maybe you could give me a couple pointers. I'd like to try that myself. Well, that sounds like fun. I just want to whack something with a hammer. That's what I want to do. Well, let's get you something hot. Put some meat on. Yeah, come on, Forrest. Tear it up. OK, now we're going to put it in. We're going to heat it up, and then we're going to put a twist in it. Okay. One more time. Back, all the way back to you. All the way back to you. And that's very good. We could like bale hay. We could, you know, jerk the hay off the hay wagon. Now you're, now you're back. You're telling your age. If you used hay hooks on round bales, you're I telling used your hay age. hooks on, yeah. Oh my. Square bales, but, they, but I use hay hooks. Well, George, thanks for turning me into a blacksmith. I really appreciate it. That was a that was a lot of fun. Yeah, no kidding. Well, if you can't make it in Iowa, you can come back and be a blacksmith. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> George, thanks so much. We're gonna take a look at your wife's shop. Thank you for having Wonderful, us. Wonderful, and thank you. And come thanks back for and everything. Again. Appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Oh, look at this beautiful door. Hi. Christina started this shop about 15 years ago. Uh, it shows all her original art. 
She has a wide array of Victorian antiques and some very nice jewelry. Well, Forrest, we did it again. Another successful two-day adventure, this time in Missouri on the Katy Trail. It was so much fun. Now, yesterday, we rode part of the trail and met some new people, stayed in an awesome bed and breakfast. Couldn't have been more exciting. Today, we got to leave Rocheport, and we went through the only and a very incredibly beautiful tunnel on the trail. We got to go to the blacksmith shop and play with some equipment, which was fun, and see a one-day-old Clydesdale. Super awesome. Some more information on everything that we saw today, go to bikepeople.tv and of course get on out there and become bike, bike people. people. You can see why people stop at Rocheport in order to get on the trail. Oh, it's beautiful. This is absolutely spectacular. Fabulous, my goodness. Every time we come to a new trail, I say this is the prettiest trail ever. I know. I really mean it this time. I know. I used to take out like food to our horse um, and put it on a napkin. And then one day, the horse ate the napkin. And I was like, OK, my horse eats napkins. So I took napkins out to the horse and fed the horse the napkins. From, and then my mom was like, what are you doing with all these napkins? And I'm like, the horse oh, is eating them. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Bike People, brought to you in part by Cat Trike. Focusing on the design, engineering, and manufacturing of innovative recumbent trikes that are made in the USA. The Hotel Pati, a cycling hub for the High Trestle and Raccoon River Valley Trail. A destination unto itself for Iowa adventures. The Hotel Pati. Bike World, the store that supports the sport serving cyclists since 1979. Additional consideration provided by Shimano, Winnebago, Bike Iowa,